no hard impact Past painful scars, in fact I blast tasteful bars and past I back up my actions, fact don't ask Grab reactions, jacked attack with every word Then act with class as they hear me snap I got nothing to lose, cause I fought and felt the bruise Now I'm not the one confused, call the shots and they produce I ain't boss, I'm finally loose, pick a new silver excuse I need the views to boost me through a new abuse of being used Everybody wants a piece now, y'all can rest in peace Now you're dead to me, so peace out, remember you're discreet now Get ready for defeat Alrighty, hello, hello everybody, this is Kyusho here, and now, whenever we last left off with this series, we had Deku and the rest of the survivors, and what's been going on with them. Now, in the last part, Deku and the survivors, they had a bit of a party. Deku and everyone, they got into the alcohol they had at the mansion. And after forgetting about some of their problems for a bit of time, Deku the next day woke up. He realized what needed to be done. He thought about what happened a while back with Momo and cut his hair. Him advising others to do the same thing as well. Everybody, they were on the fence about that, but they did understand Deku's reasoning. As he did at least start going over a plan on what to do with certain things in the mansion. Everybody getting to work on the task they've been assigned as somebody was watching them. Now, with that being said, we actually do have a bit of time later, where I don't believe I ever said what day they were on. I know they were around somewhere around day 40 to between day 50. So right now, let's just say it's been a few weeks. So, hmm, let's say 4 or 5, so that'd be 35. Let's say it's been 78 days, actually. So just a little over a month. Now, everybody, they've been hard at work. Things, they have changed, but everybody, they're trying to get accustomed to them accustomed to it now they've all been doing their task the wall it's been more fortified and while certain zombies they have been killed and somewhat taken away there is also a bit of another problem they've been putting stuff together making places and giant areas where they can collect water whenever it does start to rain and Deku and Karishima along with even Kendo they have actually gotten to work on not only trying to collect resources, but even trying to just plant basic crops. While it is actually very annoying and taxing on the body, Deku, he does see it as very good. His body needs to train to maintain one for all. And Deku, he does at least remember All Might's warning. What happens if he goes below that muscle limit that All Might talked about? If he just stops training entirely and focuses on survival and just not really exercising a lot, will there come a day where he just suddenly pop? He doesn't really know. And that thought is actually going through his mind. As he's currently outside and plowing through the land with a tool. This thought crossing his mind as he actually does somewhat, just going to wipe the sword away before looking up. He looks towards the walls. At this point, you can't see zombies, which, while it is good, it also is somewhat uneasing to Midoriya. He'd rather know when one of them are coming. But even then, he still does have the pistol in the back of his waistband, and they'd see one climb over the walls. It's not just that. The TV or television broadcasts, they've all finally gone out. There was a day a few weeks back whenever they saw the news reporter, the one who was held up in the news station. The man, he's been there for so long, and it seemed like he was on his final broadcast, as he did one simple little thing. Whenever the doors to the room bro well, blasted open, he just smashed the camera. And no one else knows what it was. They heard this strange sound, and then whenever the 
well, you know, video cut out, there was still audio. And no one likes to really think about what they may have heard. It's all up for debate. The guy could have gotten out of there. Or whatever it was in that room with him could have killed him. And they don't really want to think about that. As you do actually have where Deku, he does look up, hearing a bit of a sound. Him actually walking over to where he does have a bag, and bending down to grab his radio. Hello? Hey, Zuku. I'm uh, at the gate. Alright, uh, any zombies around? Not really, no. Most of them are cleared from this area. In fact, they're heading back towards the city. I think something loud may have happened. That's weird. You see anything new today? Uh, no. Just the usual stuff. Alright, uh, give me a minute to open the gate, okay? It's gonna take me a second. Deku quickly just going to reach down and grab his water bottle. Him chugging some water before going to set it back down and going to run towards the gate. As he does get over there, he does open it up. Karishima pulling in a vehicle as Deku just quickly closes it back up. But we do actually have outside that gate, the person who's been stalking them and monitoring their small group. They're still here. They've watched these teenagers fortify, build, and gather. They're still very angry at them. And they are going to kill them. They want to get that green-haired boy. If they can get him, then... Everything will be alright. He's the main cause for what happened. Now, we do actually have after all the work is said and done for the day. Deku plowing the fields to make way for crops. Karishima along with somebody else. Let's just say... Well, Momo and Jiro possibly gathering materials. May creating and actually trying to help. Toga, who she's helping to sort through certain things with Tokage, and Kendo, who she actually was doing something else outside. Let's say making more of the water gathering containers that they will have use for later on down the line. As everybody they do gather after a few hours, where the sun does start to go down. This being where Deku, him and everyone else, they're sitting down to eat dinner. Today, it was actually Kendo's turn to cook. And while everybody, they were very concerned as to what she might make, they were kind of pleasantly surprised. She made something basic out of certain pasta and some sauce, along with even some meat they did have. Well, it wasn't exactly the preferred style of meat, since it wasn't ground or anything like that. It was pre-packaged. But even then, it was still pretty good. They've been having to get creative. Since, you know. While some stores, they are lucky sometimes with being able to preserve meat. Others, the meat's gone rotten in its packaging. So there's that problem. And right now, there is actually a thought that does cross Deku's mind. He's chewing what could be best described as a hot dog and pasta. He's just wondering, if it's possible for them to find a cow, what could they do then? Yeah, cattle and stuff like that would be important, but would it be possible for raising cattle on the grounds here? Well, the area is big. Where would they even put all those guys? Or, well, you know, animals? Plus, there'd be the smell. Well... It would be good for crops, but would that be a good trade-off? Would that be what Deku does think? As he does go to stand up, he got to grab something on the table. As he does go to pour himself a glass and go to start drinking from it. As Deku, he does go to stand up then, talking about how he's going to take the first shift. Him walking outside. As everybody else, they do continue to eat. They notice that Deku's a lot like that. He seems to not really want to go to bed or try to sleep. It is very concerning to many of them. 
They have noticed it. They aren't pretending like it's not there. All of them, they've had to do things that, while they aren't proud of them, they themselves can create good reasons for. And there's no one denying it. Hell, even May, while she is very blunt, she actually has somewhat mellowed out more. Just show part of her humanity, especially whenever she's put under these circumstances. And you do actually have where she does go to try and liven up the quiet room by talking about a invention she's been able to make. As she does talk about how she's been able to try to create other tools that can help them. Now, she does try to at least talk about a grappling hook, which while people, they are all looking around at each other, no one really wants to try and test it, especially because she's tried that once before. As we do actually cut outside with Deku. Deku, he's sitting down outside, and right now he does at least have a thermos. He does usually keep out here. Well, he does usually say it's full of water whenever he's on watch. That's not really the case. As he's sitting down drinking and just trying to think. He does have a rifle, and he does also have the pistol, along with the knife by his leg. Right now, he looks like he's on a movie poster. That's what it does feel like. Huh. It'd be great if this was all just a movie. <sighs> There'd be an ending, at least. That being what Deku does think. Somebody walking outside, as Deku, he does go from sitting backwards to someone just leaning forwards onto his knees. The person sitting down asking him if he's all good. I'm fine. You sure? Yeah. I'm all... I'm... Yeah. I'm okay. You know, usually drinking dulls your senses. It's water. No, it isn't, isn't it? Yeah, so what? Well, you're our leader, so I thought you'd at least understand. You need a clear mind. <laughs> Easy for you to say, Jiro. I was out there today, okay? I saw some shit. Hell. It was lucky that we even escaped with our lives today. Really? Take it to say turning his head. Yeah. We still haven't been able to find settlements of other people, but we've heard rumors. There's drawings, paintings, and, well, signals or signs talking about settlements, places to stay. But, but, but we don't know. The areas they're in are too infested. And if people are there, then they might be dead. Yeah, I know. Yeah, I still don't understand how you can be so calm about all this. Calm? You think I'm calm about all the shit I've been seeing, all the shit I've been doing, all the shit that's been going on. Jiro. Dude. Did, did you have to do what I've done? I've killed zombies, yeah. Not that. Kill people. No, I... Good. It's one of the reasons I can't sleep. No, if you would, just please leave me alone. Deku actually going to stand up. As he does go to step forwards towards an area where it is dark. And Jiro is just confused at what he is doing. Until she does hear a sound, and then she does actually just start to realize going to stand up talking about how Deku, he really does need to get it, get his shit together. Since if he's going to be falling apart, he's going to compromise all of them. Her turning around to walk away. As Deku, after relieving himself, he does go back over to the stairs. At least that got her to go away. He really just wants to try to think about things for himself right now. <sighs> He just wants to be alone right now. 
He doesn't know how else to describe it. The thoughts going through his head, the shit going through his mind. He has left this place. He's seen what's going on out there. He's seen what the world's turned into. It's turned into pure fucking chaos. Every day, things seem to get worse. Apparently, that thing he saw out there, the Lockjaws as he does call it, or nicknamed it as, it wasn't the only strange creature. Many of these infected, they're starting to, as the best way to describe it, mutate or turn into different things. And from what he's at least gathered using information in his notebook, he's been able to start categorizing many of them. And right now, they do have another problem. They have to deal with these things called shadows. While they aren't very bad to deal with during the daytime, there's a problem with going into places that turned dark, where lights aren't on. These things are very fast. They have multiple limbs. And from what he understands, they might hunt in small packs. Since you never see one alone, at least that's what Kendo described when she saw one. But even then, the fact that they hide in close quarters, and they have multiple limbs, it means that there's a possibility that they're always touching walls. And even then, if the muscle frame stays relatively intact, the person is still able to jump in between. With multiple limbs like that, the increase in speed, it's easy to understand why they're so dangerous. Out in the open, yeah, they're probably not as dangerous, they do have a speed advantage. But a bullet? Yeah. In clear daylight, you might be able to kill one easily. But then there's also this thing called spiders they've made, or they've nicknamed. You can seize them sometimes. It's best not to get too close to areas where you can't see the top. From what he understands, spiders, they're multiple limbed humans. And they do have a tenacity to ambush from above. It's a thing that does happen. They will dive down onto you, grab you, and immediately just pull you up. It's a strange thing. They're able to use their melted skin as somewhat like a plastic substance. It's elastic and elongates. It's like you're pulling back a rubber band. The moment it lets go or it does do something, it can just get pulled right back up. That's what makes these things so dangerous. But then there's the rest of his notebook. He is just trying to think. If there are other variants besides these three, they're going to be in real danger. Plus, they're still All Might. Hmm. Okay. Now, you do actually have where a bit of time does go by. And after Deku, him and a person do switch out, Deku, he does going to take his weapon back to his room. As we do actually have the person who was sneaking into the mansion. They were able to find an area where they could hop the fence. Well, they did have to use a zombie corpse to fly over the fence's defenses. They were able to climb over the wire and, well, spikes they do have there. And they were able to get in. They were running across the grounds in a darkened area. Well, they actually hear Deku and this other person switch places. Let's say Tokage. Him and her do swap out. She herself has had problems sleeping. And she really doesn't want to try to admit it. But she just is scared shitless. And right now, as Deku, he's walking back to his room. He is actually a bit buzzed. Along with things being a bit hazy. Maybe I'll stay asleep tonight. That'd be what Deku is thinking. As he's walking through the hallway, he does see something strange. He does see what he thought to be something moving in a window. And the moment he saw that, he immediately did go to stop for a second. I'm going to turn his head as he did pay attention. Okay, that's weird. My eyes are either playing tricks on me or I saw something there. 
You do actually have the person. They're hiding just out of view. And they're waiting. They know where Deku's room is. They've seen him go to it multiple times. And right now, if they get there first, they can kill him. The moment he goes to bed, they can ambush him and just stab him right in the throat. Now, Deku, he does get to his room. As you do actually have where the assassin, they are waiting there. The moment they actually see Deku lying down in bed, they do go to attack him. Then going to bring the knife over their head and stab downwards into the blanket. As whenever they did go to wait for a second, there was no blood. And they went to go pull out the knife to find feathers. This being where Deku, he actually just ambushed the person. Him smashing into their back as the person just go flying forwards into the wall. And everybody, they were either asleep or still lying awake. Them hearing the commotion as you do actually have, some of them rushing towards Deku's room. As we do actually have there. Someone opening the door and throwing open the lights, or throwing on the lights. As whenever they do, they do see Deku staying there. He does have both a knife and a gun in his hand. As he does have the gun pointed straight at the person. And you do actually have the person. Who they're covered in mud, blood, and bites. And you do actually have where people they do see him. They don't recognize this guy. But even then, he's crazy. He snuck in here and tried to kill Deku. And then you do actually have where he does open his mouth. I can't believe it. How could I fall for such a trick, you little bastard? Hmm? Who are you? <laughs> you don't recognize me? Really? After what you did to my friends? Still doesn't ring a bell. This guy... He's in a military uniform. Maybe? Shit, he's covered in too much mud. He's too dirty and he smells like shit. Now, the man he does try to explain to everybody. Do they know that this little shit here killed all his men? Do they know he killed his comrades? Do they know he lit a monster right to them? And then he ran off like a pussy. Everybody actually looking at the man before looking at Deku. As Deku, he does retaliate this claim by asking what about what happened to everybody they've encountered? What happened to the civilians the military was supposed to evacuate? And the man he did just stand there. He's holding a gun, and people there are too scared to approach. You do actually have Tokage. She heard the commotion and came running. And she herself is actually holding a pistol, while well, everybody, they do at least have some weapons on them. Her and another person are the only ones with firearms, besides Deku, and this unknown assailant. However, Kendo, she does notice one thing. If the guy has a gun, and he's putting it right at Deku, wouldn't he fire it? He wouldn't be hesitating. And Deku, he does know this information too. As he does ask this exact question to the man. And the man, well, he is actually staying there. He does express to Deku that he's trying to talk for a minute. Along with that, if he really wanted to, he can kill all of them. In fact, this kid is just that. He's a fucking kid. So... There's not really any point in it. Besides, nothing matters anymore. Everybody's just gonna die. That'd be what the man does talk about. Everybody they do will think. This guy's fucking crazy. And then you do actually have Deku. Who, where the man did actually go to turn his head, he saw somebody moving with a gun. The moment that they actually go to bring up their gun, a bullet was fired. As you do actually have a second shot. And then a third. Now. You do actually have what happened. Tokage. The girl who was just on watch. She tried to step up. She rushed in front of Kendo. And she went to go bring up her firearm. The moment she did, she was able to let out a shot. The moment the guy saw her turning, he went to go bring his gun up and blast her. 
him being able to strike her right in the chest, as she was actually able to shoot him right in the arm. Now, the bullet went right through his forearm as he dropped the gun. And there actually was Deku, who he went to go shoot this guy right in the head. Now, Deku, in his sudden panic of went to go bring up the gun and pull the trigger, he actually was able to fire the gun and the bullet go right in the guy's shoulder. It's up striking with his collarbone as they get smashed backwards onto Deku's bed. Deku actually closed in the distance as he does kick the guy out of the way and go to grab this guy's left arm. Him going to twist his wrist as he's going to grab the knife. The moment he does go to grab it, he does go to throw this guy forwards and onto the ground. As Karishima and Kendo do both rush in. As you do actually have Tokage. She was shot right in the chest. And she does have a very bad wound. Everybody else is trying to tend to her. Well, Deku, Karishima, and Kendo are all trying to restrain this intruder. And you do actually have where they do tie him up somewhere and put him somewhere where they can't hear him. Meanwhile, you do actually have Tokage. They took her to a place, let's just say a room, where they can set her down carefully and start to try and treat her injuries. It doesn't seem like it could be bad, they're not exactly too sure. Right now they're trying to figure out how bad her injuries are. It's clear that she won't be up and moving for a while. And from what Deku, he can at least see, there's a good chance that she may have been shot in her appendix. He doesn't really know. Either that's the appendix, or it's somewhere around the lower intestine, maybe, or a high intestine, or the stomach. He's just trying to not to panic. And right now, everybody, they are just trying to get her medical attention. As, well, trying to treat her, let's say about 30 minutes do go by. And eventually she does pass off from blood loss. And while well, everybody there trying to help and figure it out, Deku, he does have one thought go through his mind. She's going to die. They haven't lost anybody since all of them got to the manor. And right now, she is going to die. All because of that fucking guy downstairs. And Deku, he does get angry. Everybody they do turn to see Deku as just going to walk away. He did not say a single word. He just picked up the knife on the table and left. Everybody, they already know Deku has a gun. But then there's that knife. What is it? It's some sort of military knife. They, they think it's called a K-bar, right? Kendo trying to at least confirm this. As Deku, he does walk downstairs. Him going to another staircase and walking down there more. As he's currently in the Yairuzu wine cellar. And him and this man, they actually are Deku standing in front of the man as the man is sitting down. And Deku, he does do one simple thing. He grabs a bottle of wine. It's nice and cold. Him popping off the top as he does step forwards. Going to pour wine on this guy's face and trying to get him to talk. The man, he's not doing that. And right now... After waking up, he does seem kind of confused. As Deku, he does not go to smack him across the face with a bottle. And the glasses break and shatter. Deku then going to hold the knife before telling the guy that he's going to give him a few simple options. You little bastard. I'm the bastard? You try to kill us. In fact, you hunt down the civilians who survived. So... If you call me a bastard, I'm going to tell you one thing. I have a fucking reason to be. You pissed me off. My friend upstairs? She's going to die because of you. <laughs> I'll at least take one of you with me to hell. Hmm. You say that. But, they're going to actually bring up the broken bottle. Putting the glass closer and closer to this guy's face. Asking him what he thinks about him just killing him. You're a little fucking psycho, aren't you? I'm a psycho? Me. You're bitten. 
multiple times. Your mind is degrading. You're fucking going crazy because you're infected. <laughs> Maybe. But I'll get you. No. Deku does actually go to roll back his sleeve. And for me, the man that he was already bitten over three months ago. Or closer to two. Or, yeah, over two months ago. And the guy, he doesn't believe Deku. He does stare at the bite mark. But then he does actually go to look at an old wound on his arm. He can tell that Deku is not lying. However, before he can even really say anything, Deku, he does go to do one simple thing. He brings up the knife and goes to stab down this guy's leg. As everybody upstairs, they do hear a loud scream. Some of them coming down. And seeing that the door Deku walked down, that's where the screams are coming from. And Deku, yeah, he locked it. Right now, everybody, they're very concerned. Down in that room is Deku and this military guy. And right now, they're both locked in there. And somebody is screaming. As we do have Deku, he does inform this guy that he's going to get information out of him. And he wants some answers. So it would be best for him to just, just to answer him right now. The man, he does try to cuss out Deku and insults him. As we do actually have the screams to continue. And they eventually do die out. Somewhere around 45 minutes later. As everybody who was waiting outside the room, they are still there. Meanwhile, everybody else is giving Tokage at least, you know, they're making her comfortable. Especially since she's already gone. Now, eventually that door does open. And you do actually have where Deku, he does walk out. And he does just not say a word. Everybody, they saw him walk out. Karishima and Kendo. But then there was actually how they did see him. Deku had a blank expression. And he just simply walked over to the sink and went to go start to wash his hands as they were both covered in blood. Now, many of them were concerned as you do have where Deku does inform everybody to come to the living room. And all of them, yeah, they don't know what to really say here. Meanwhile, we do have where everybody does get gathered together and Deku, he is sitting down. He has changed his clothes, and he does try to give them the information he's just learned. Everybody, they're not so they're not really ready to hear it. Deku sits all of them down before going to state the following. Everyone, there's a reason why the military is here. What? Spit it out. The military, they're killing civilians. And capturing those who are infected to experiment on them. They're even trying to capture healthy subjects. They, um... They're trying to learn more about the infection. And they're doing that by infecting healthy people. And trying to experiment on them. What? Wait. What you're saying... You're saying that the military, they, they don't care. Apparently the president of Japan died already. The military, they have unlimited power. And whoever is in charge, giving the orders, they want this infection, whatever this is. They want to weaponize it. Quarks can't be used in war. But this isn't a quirk. It's a fucking virus. It infects and mutates bodies. People, they can still use whatever is left of their quirk. That's not even the worst of it. Deku Kuna talk about how apparently there are nests. And apparently they've released some of the ones they've made. It's horrifying to think about. The infected, they work in nests. This information, it doesn't make sense. 
In Deku, he does at least inform everybody. Whenever someone does ask how he got this information, Deku does full silence. Him standing up and going to walk away. He doesn't want to think about it. He does head back to his room. However, after getting back there, his sheets and his room smells like blood. So he does just go to walk away. Him actually going to stay in another empty room. As Deku, he's currently just lying down. He did start drinking some more of another bottle. And right now, the events that just happened, they sobered him up a lot, and he'd rather not be that right now. Now, as Deku is laying down, he does just think about it. What he just did, he just tortured a man. He's seen it so casually thrown out there in movies. Just so casually done before. But what he just experienced was not like in the movies. His heart was racing the entire time. He had the taste of vomit in his mouth. And even then, he was shaking. He's scared as to what he just did. The fact that he was capable of it, it just, it frightens him. Now, Deku's door is open. As the moment it actually does, Deku, he does go to bring out his hand and go to hold up a gun. As the person after they do walk in, they do just go to freeze. <laughs> Jesus, you're way too jumpy. What are you doing in here? I I'm sorry. I didn't mean to scare you. That doesn't answer my question. I came to check on you. Why? Because I heard about what you did. I I heard it too. <laughs> yeah, I know. I I just I thought I thought it would help. It's I I just Deku's eyes turn up. He doesn't know how to defend his claims. He doesn't know how to defend his actions. And the person who comes stepping forwards. Deku, he did go to sit up. And he does have his legs touching the ground, his feet, in fact. He put down the gun. And the person who does go to sit down on the bed and go to grab Deku into a hug. Right now, Deku needs it. And from what she can tell, Deku, he's had a lot of trouble in his mind. He's had a lot of things in his mind. As Momo, she does ask Deku if he does want to be alone tonight. <laughs> no. I, um... I don't... I don't think so. I, I just... I'm scared. I miss... I miss my mom. I miss Bakugo. I miss... fucking... everybody. I miss going home. I miss... having dinner with my mother. I just... I miss... everything. Last year... What I wouldn't give to relive that bastard just picking on me. Oh, calling me nothing. Calling me a quirkless dumbass. Telling me to dive off the roof. If I knew things would be like this, I would have done it without a second thought. Momo actually hearing that. The process of hearing those words... Deku apparently was quirkless last year. The friend guy he knew was a bully and told him to kill himself. And Deku, he would right now? Okay, listen, Izuku, I... I don't know... I don't know how to... 
I just... Her just holding on to Deku. As she doesn't let him stay by himself tonight. Right now, he's clearly on the verge of losing his mind again. And they know that he isn't stable, but he needs people. He can't be left alone. If he is, he's going to lose his mind. And everybody, they need him. He has plans. He has ideas. He's their leader. He needs to be of sound mind. But even then, right now everybody else are going through the same thing. They're either awake or they're crying. Or they're just numbing themselves like this. The same way Deku is doing. Now. With that being said, I do hope you guys enjoyed. Have an amazing day. I'll catch you guys in the next part.